Hello everyone, uh, welcome to join my session. It's about the um, hybrid cloud. Today, yes, I will share with you the uh, pitfalls when migrating to hybrid cloud. Um, welcome to uh, Barcelona. Welcome to join this session. I know this session is hard for you guys because it's a lunch time. After here, finish my session, you can grab the lunch, enjoy the food in Barcelona. Welcome. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shu Quan. I am the uh, technical director at 99 Cloud. I heavily involve OpenStack community since 2012. I focus on the uh, 99 Cloud product development and the service support areas. Okay. A little bit introduction about 99 Cloud. 99 Cloud is the um, Chinese first pure OpenStack startup since 2012. We have over four years code contribution since 2012. And we are the uh, global top 10 OpenStack contributor regarding code uh, commitment, blueprint, bug fix, and uh, line of code. As you see, we also um, delivered the first COA training in China. We ha had the, uh, the mark mentioned us in the keynote today. And also, very luckily, we are become the gold member from yesterday. Okay. What 99 Cloud do? 99 Cloud folks on filling the last mile gap in the OpenStack vertical adoption. We help many uh, customer in Regard, uh, in the electronic power industry, financial banking industry, help them to adopt OpenStack, resolve their business requirement, and improve their work efficiency. This is example we work with the Chinese grace, state grade to deliver the OpenStack in nine provinces, and we plan to work with them to cover 100 provinces by 2018. So this is a, a general introduction about me, about 99 Cloud. Let's come to today's agenda. Today, we are talking about the state, of, uh, about the hybrid cloud, the pitfalls in hybrid cloud. First of all, I will uh, in talk about the current state of hybrid cloud. And then I will t uh, talk about why we ha used to hybrid cloud, why many companies, they want to turn to hybrid cloud strategy. Third, I will talk about the typical hybrid cloud user cases. And last but not least, I will show you the pitfalls and my considerations about the hybrid cloud. The state of hybrid cloud. Uh, today, the companies are no longer asking if they should move to the cloud. To today, they are, do you have questions? <laughs> raise the hand, okay. If you guys have any questions, just raise the hand and I will answer the questions. Uh, companies are no longer asking if we should move to cloud. They are asking, how can I leverage the public cloud? How can I move, to migrate to a hybrid cloud strategy, or even use OpenStack technology to manage different clouds, multiple clouds? Why? Because hybrid cloud can uh, offer a company the best of both public cloud and private cloud. From, I present some data from some uh, reports and surveys here. You can see uh, from the rest scale reports, over uh, about 71% companies are starting to use hybrid cloud. And from some cloud cruise surveys, it's about 75% of companies are planning to adapt hybrid cloud. So the numbers telling us hybrid cloud is the next trend of the cloud business or, or your company's cloud strategy. Why hybrid cloud is so interesting to different companies? I think there are three important factors here. The first one is speed. As we know, cl cloud is already accelerating our uh, efficiency or accelerating our speed of depend, uh, deployment, but hybrid cloud can do that even more. Why? Because a private cloud cannot always provide all the resources required by a company in a very soft frame. 
especially in those businesses such as the online uh, gaming or some uh, online selling, that kind of business, they have very peak requirement when uh, in such like Black Friday or Christmas Eve, that festival. So high by adapting hybrid cloud, we can scale within minutes and provide resources in a very short time frame. And by leveraging hybrid cloud, we can also we can use another cross model. This uh, this is buying the base and rent the peak. The third is um, by uh, leveraging hybrid cloud, we can also uh, meet some compliance requirement and uh, and reach the geography requirement. For uh, for example, in some banking or financial industry, government required data must be stored in three, three data center distributed in three different uh, locations. If we are going to use private cloud to fulfill that requirement, that will cost a lot. We have to build different data center, copy the same infrastructure and architecture into different area and, and build an, another operation teams to support that. But with hybrid cloud, we can just put the a disaster recovery data center in the public cloud by just uh, calling the uh, public cloud API to create different geo location data center to fulfill the disaster uh, recovery requirement. And also, some uh, compliance required data must be restricted in some location. So the location uh, geography need is also great uh, filled by the hybrid cloud. Let's see some uh, typical hybrid cloud use cases. First one is uh, we can call it as a best cloud allocation. We, there are a lot of criteria when we choose different cloud provider, such as performance, cost, security, compliance, co-location, etc. We can do the, uh, we can leverage the hybrid cloud orchestration to put the application in different clouds and to, uh, to implement the best cloud allocation. The second is a life based, uh, life cycle based development. Different vertical uh, industry have different requirements on the DevOps environment and production uh, published environment requirement. So uh, hybrid cloud and public cloud combined together can greatly fit this situation fit different, uh, can meet different requirements for them. Third is a disaster recovery I just mentioned. It's, it can, we can just put a disaster recovery environment in public cloud, help us to reduce the cost and accelerate the efficiency. And last is uh, the cloud bursting. With hybrid cloud, we can great, uh, great leverage the uh, public cloud dynamic resources to do the cloud bursting when we, the business need it. So uh, we just mentioned best cloud allocation. It, normally, we, when we choose hybrid cloud, we will look into different requirement filters. Performance, some, maybe some public cloud, they could do great jobs in the GPU computing, so we can land those kind of application in the GPU cloud. And some cloud, it has missed some compliance. So we can put the application which require uh, security concerns in those clouds. And some cloud, it has great, uh, has many different data center. We can put it in uh, different location to fulfill those geography requirements. And when the hybrid cloud has the application orchestration capability, it can help us to orchestrate our application in different cloud provider. Life cycle based uh, development. I think um, normally people would like to do the DevOps in the private cloud and then if your business has special need, you can publish your uh, production environment in pr uh, public cloud, right? But uh, we have seen there are many situations. Be, uh, for example, the first one 
if some uh, deve uh, some development require a very mature um, age of development process and CI/CD tool chain, but at this moment your private cloud cannot provide those tools to you, then you currently there are many public cl uh, cloud provide such kind of uh, agility tools to help you to build your application. Then you can just temporarily put your dev test environment in the public cloud, and after you finish your production, you can move the production back to your private cloud or still keep it in the public cloud. Another situation is that uh, when you develop a new application, this application may have very dynam dynamic status. It will have peak requirements. Then it's better to keep this re application in public cloud because the public cloud can fulfill your peak re requirements. And when you have a lot of data analysis to know exactly what the status of the uh, application, then you can put the uh, move the application back to your private cloud. Just keep the steady status of application in your private cloud to keep the cost cost low. Uh, disaster recovery is a, a cost-effective way to use private cloud for disaster recovery, and uh, because we don't want to cost, uh, we don't want the cost of provisioning duplicate infrastructure, which is hardly used. And uh, by because public cloud provide a lot of um, com and convenient APIs for us to create those uh, data center distributed, so we can just leverage the public cloud to do it. And mo what's most is hybrid cloud can help us to uh, orchestrate and move the application pr from one allo uh, allocation to another allocation. The last uh, is about the cloud bursting. I, I bet many of you may heard about the um, hybrid cloud. Typical use case is the cloud bursting. We all know we can burst from pri private cloud to a uh, public cloud, but that's not the the reality. is really uh, is not so beautiful. If we just have a side to side VPN from hybrid cloud. Uh, from private cloud to public cloud, that will be a disaster when you do the bursting because the network bandwidth and other network condition will be very bad. So when you plan to do the cloud bursting, uh, accordingly you can uh, uh, choose the public cloud uh, provider to use such as the AWS Direct Connect or the Ali Cloud Express Connect to help you just uh, connect your data center with the public cloud VPC together to get the L2 uh, network connection and get, get the, enjoy the best quality of the network so that you can have a truly cloud bursting. So hybrid cloud is uh, very nice. It can resolve our many uh, problems and build a nice future. Or uh, many of us may hope we can just migrate to hybrid cloud by just a click, right? But the reality is like this. We may f fall into the people's accidentally, and you, you will do not have any, uh, you will go into a lot of troubles, manage all the things, manage different cloud APIs, manage different uh, templates, and c do the converge templates or image all the time. So today, I going to share with you um, five people about the um, when you're migrating to a hybrid cloud. People, uh, number one, fail to manage clouds with a single pane of glass. Um, it's very easy to get right up around uh, in the bus around and rush into the hybrid cloud without doing the proper work first, just like Oh, I want a hybrid cloud, so I get a AWS, I get OpenStack, then I am a hybrid cloud solution. That's wrong, because currently, even um, o, uh, in OpenStack, there is a, no project or a component can help to manage uh, multiple OpenStack cloud or even 
um, OpenStack Cloud and other uh, clouds such as AWS or, or uh, Ali Cloud. We, ca we can call this heterogeneous cloud. So we have uh, different clouds on hands. How can we do with it? We uh, either you find a vendor to help you to build a cloud uh, management platform uh, in the on the top of it, or you will work with the uh, work with the community to leverage an existing solution to involve the open stack to help you to manage multiple clouds. So uh, we we will be blind if we cannot see the uh, the cloud with uh, between uh, the, uh, we cannot see the cloud. We c you cannot control the things you cannot see, right? So lose the uh, lose the single panel control means you be blind in the resources in the hybrid cloud. So the quick way is to leverage a cloud management platform such as what. Rescale, Scalar, or Fit to Cloud help you to manage different uh, clouds, heterogeneous clouds. It can these gray vendors they can help you to manage uh, manage OpenStack and or AWS or other clouds. But if you adopt this vendor as a hybrid cloud management solution on top of different clouds, then you have to talk with the this vendor platform state provide their own APIs, so your application have to talk with these APIs. If you are going to uh, leverage OpenStack APIs to manage different OpenStack clouds, there is a long story because currently the community is still working on this process. Community has many tools, or uh, uh, have some few projects, and some component has some few blueprints to help us to resolve the um, resource management and the monitor dashboard, user role management, image portability, network topology in hybrid cloud context. I will show you later about those things. So, with, uh, so don't just ha hash into the hybrid cloud. You have to consider your cloud management platform. What kind of platform you want to choose is a vendor support or just evolve with the community or your homegrown solution. We, will, we don't like to be blind on the resources of the hybrid cloud, just like the Aya. <laughs> so the uh, pitfall number two, fail to handle uh, credentials in hybrid cloud. If we have multiple clouds, different clouds have its own authentication systems. We have to keep the different credentials in different uh, systems. That, first of all, that is re really uh, not, not an easy work for user because you have to remember so many accounts, user name, password. And second, it's very uh, insecure because you have to put your username, password, uh, store in the cloud pr management platform and how you use the platform to manage different cloud resources. So it would be better if we have a, just one single uh, authentication point to manage virtual resources spread over multiple clouds, no matter they are OpenStack clouds or other clouds. By doing this, we can remove the need of a user constantly remember different uh, passwords for each cloud, and we can re increase the productivity why, uh, uh, why dealing with those clouds APIs? And uh, we can estimate, uh, we can eliminate uh, the need of a user identity in existing in each cloud. Luckily, um, OpenStack has a feature about this. As we know from the uh, Kilo cycle, OpenStack has a federation, uh, fed federation keystone. By using Federation Keystone, we can uh, implement the uh, single sign-on SSO to uh, federate different OpenStack cloud together. So we do not need to uh, remember different username, password in different OpenStack instance. We can just configure properly the federated identity and then use the uh, OpenStack Keystone to Keystone Federation to implement that. 
Second of all, if you have to um, use other clouds such as AWS or Ali, Ali Cloud, then you it, it would be better to, to integrate with their identity services such as the um, AWS, IAM, or Ali Cloud RAM. They will help you to create another account which is not your master account. You will use those accounts to, to talk with the specific resources. So let's see how uh, the federated identity works. In the uh, federated identity, it is a mechanism to establish trust between the um, identity providers and service providers. Uh, in these cases, uh, between the identity provider and the service provider is provided by the OpenStack. It supports several, uh, several uh, protocols such as the SAMO assumption, OpenID, OAuth, you can configure the, uh, those protocols according to your need. And the uh, service provider, it will provide the user to use the uh, resources such as volume, image, instance. And the user will, re will request to use uh, resources from the service provider, and the service provider will uh, use the uh, for example, SAML assumption to ask identity provider to uh, authorize an authentication for those users. After they pass this authentication, the user can actually use the resources of the uh, service provider. So each keystone can be a um, service provider or identity provider. When we uh, configure those two uh, roles for one keystone, we can, Im we can re uh, implement the keystone to keystone fe uh, federation to, uh, to uh, actually federate different OpenStack clouds together. Then you can, use, uh, you can use one account to assess different cloud and enjoy the resources in different OpenStack. P4, number three, fall to the um, fail to automate network configuration across clouds. I think that is the biggest problem uh, when we uh, consider hybrid cloud strategy. Because across cloud, we have to just one, one command or one button click to create a network which it can put all the cloud L2 or L3 networking connection. And uh, we can have all the tenant VMs regarding these VMs in uh, cloud number one, cloud number B, they are all connected. And all, what's more, we want the security group also enabled in, across different clouds. And even the uh, quota control, right? The port, and such. So uh, currently, um, that is the big fundamental problem for the hybrid cloud solution, and also in the NFE area. So um, OpenStack community currently have two projects working to help, hoping to resolve those uh, problems. First one is uh, Tacker. This one is an official OpenStack project for NFV orchestration and VNF management using standard the based architectures. It supports the VNF placement on specific target OpenStack VIM. It comes from an uh, um, uh, architecture called the uh, ETS MANO uh, framework. It refers to this framework to build the uh, NFV orchestration and management system, hoping to manage the network automation in different uh, open stack. In tech, we call it v, uh, VIM. And another project is uh, from the uh, TriCircle. It, chain, uh, it split the project to two parts, and the tricycle focus on the uh, networking automation across neutron and use mu uh, in multiple region OpenStack or um, multiple OpenStack instance. And you can just use the neutron command in the uh, use the neutron way to control the network and automate the network in the in this uh, tricycle project and. So what's Tecra? This framework is I uh, just mentioned is a ETSI mono architecture framework. 
is from the uh, it's a NF uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a standard framework to uh, tell uh, it telling the people how to do the NFV orchestration and management and the rec rectangle in the right hand side you can see is how the uh, NFV manual work uh, frameworks uh, means and for for the for this part is for the uh, attacker scope and for the virtual infrastructure management it will abstract as the open stack in open stack context that is open stack but if you put this manual architecture in high, in other in a, in a border area you can regard the, this part as uh, AWS or other um, cloud it will help us to provision the network the compute resources storage resources and uh, network resources to visualize the network function and for the tucker it will help us to orchestrate and management the life cycle of all these virtual network function to implement the network automate uh, network connectivity between different clouds so this is the uh, tech architecture for different uh, for for generally you can see it consists of two parts NV, uh, NFVO now, uh, orchestrator and the NFVM management lifecycle management and in the bottom it will management different VIM which is the OpenStack instance size or even different uh, multiple uh, or other heterogeneous clouds from the uh, latest roadmap we can see beyond Newton tech team will plan to implement the multiple uh, VIM support including VMware AWS we are looking for this project to help us to resolve the network automation problem in hybrid cloud context <coughs> so uh, after finish this grouping we can just call use OpenStack to management different clouds such as OpenStack uh, AWS, VMware Cloud, and use the tag to automate the network orchestration and, and VNF manage, uh, lifecycle management and connect all the network within dif uh, different clouds and implement the uh, tenant management, tenant network management, security, and other things in the uh, and other network uh, functions. So Tiger provide our an, uh, another concept about how to implement the uh, network automation uh, in different clouds. Let's check the uh, how TriCircle do the network automation. It will leverage the uh, new trend plugin. In the TriCircle central, it will have a central ne central network neutron plugin, and in different clouds or regions, it will have its local neutron plugin. And when we have the uh, network creation event, it will go through the, uh, the pl plug, it will pass to different clouds, and the local neutron plugin will help us to build a uh, network uh, connect, uh, help us to build a network and put all the network connection together. And num uh, people, number four fail to orchestrate application across clouds if we have a um, network connection uh, automatically connected together in different clouds second of all we will like to build applications those applications can uh, can just meet the requirement I just mentioned the best cloud allocation we would like to put the application one part in for example in AWS another part maybe in private cloud in OpenStack in OpenStack, we have a project called Murano. It will help introduce an application catalog to OpenStack, which will help us to orchestrate the uh, application and publish, help, help the uh, developer to pub publish their cloud-ready applications. But currently, um, the Murano cannot help us to orchestrate the application 
cross cloud or deploy in different cloud. Currently, Murano only can do the multi-region deployment. We can see some people will uh, draft some blueprint to support the uh, extend the Murano capability to deploy the application across different clouds. But this, I think, uh, this will uh, wait for the evolve of the Murano because currently this feature is not in the list of uh, priority list of Murano team. We will uh, we will walk, see how the Murano uh, growing and support the hybrid cloud application in the future. And if you are going to use Murano, another option is that you can use the um, cloud defy plugin. I I, check with, I, I have to look at the Cloudify, if they provide another plugin which can work with the Murano to orchestrate the uh, Murano application in different clouds by using the Tosca template directly. So uh, this may be another option to leverage the Cloudify and uh, Murano together. <coughs> People number five loves control and protect, pro, protect when migrating to hybrid cloud. So uh, if you are going to build an application, network is all ready. The next thing you are going to consider is that, am I safe if I put my application in hybrid cloud? In this safe, maybe in your private cloud, because your hybrid, hybrid cloud is much safe, secure, you have uh, isolating network and network, you have firewall, but is it safe or you, do you have, still have data protection or encryption all the time in the public cloud? And do you, when you put the data or application in the public cloud, does the public cloud provider still meet all the compliance requirement? That is very important. As we see in here, there are a lot of compliance in the um, in the different in the, uh, industry, if you are going to migrate your application and you are in a very security concern uh, industry, then you are better to look at what kind of uh, compliance the public cloud provider is meet. Then you, are, you can have confidence to move your application back, uh, move your, uh, migrate your application to the hybrid cloud. So I'm not going to go through all the uh, compliance you can for your reference. So how to, uh, what's the solution for this? Uh, you have to check the public cloud provider's compliance requirement. Uh, compliance, if they meet all the requirements, that's the first. And, and you have to wait if some public cloud provider do not meet the compliance and you cannot do too much about this. But what you can do is you have to uh, combine all the monitoring and log analysis in your private cloud and visualize them and have your private cloud meet the, all the compliance. That's very important. And you can also provide some all the logs and reports to certify, satisfy the regulators. And the second part is very important. You have to know exactly what kind of security issues currently OpenStack have, right? You, you have to know what kind of uh, security uh, issues can this version have, what kind of uh, is, uh, des design issues, what, uh, what kind of issue is, uh, uh, is by default it's just there. You have to find a way to work around and meet all the compliance. Fortunately, we have uh, OpenStack have a security project to, to help you to understand clearly currently the OpenStack security uh, uh, issues. You can check the website here to see uh, the security OpenStack.org, and you will see there are OpenStack has uh, different kinds of security issues. One is called the uh, OSSA. It will create it to deal with the um, security issues in OpenStack, which is fixed and available, you can get the patch and put in your, in your cloud if you, your version is older. And second is about the um, OSSN. This is a 
notes to for is for your information. This is typically some design issue or deployment is configuration uh, configuration issues. You would like to know this issue and uh, and find a solution for it or mitigate it. So uh, I think that's all. It's for all the people share sharing. How you to hoping it will help you to know all the peoples and you can avoid to jump into the, these peoples and have a great journey for, on the way to the hybrid cloud. Thank you.